Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on physical geography as well as human geography. So in today's session, we are going to talk about something which is very interesting and has been asked by several of my viewers that please upload a video on time geography. So in this session, we are going to talk about time geography, its basic components, its basic characteristics and the conceptualization. But before we go ahead, please like and subscribe our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about the concept of time geography. But before we go into the concept of time geography, let's understand what is time. So time is basically what? It is an indefinite continued progress. So remember, it is not definite. It is a continuation of the existence and events that is in progression. So that is important. The second important point is that it is apparently irreversible. So till now, science and technology has not got anything that can reverse time. So that is important as well, that it is an irreversible succession that is from past to present to future. That is how we understand the basic of time. Apart from that, it is also something that has to do with the measurements used to sequence events, to compare the duration of events or the intervals between them. So that is also important. And to quantify the rates of change of quantities. Remember when we talked about the river discharge, then also it was about per unit time. So remember it is talking about the measurement that is also important and also in the conscious experience. So that is important that we experience time consciously every day every particular moment and that is also what I said was related to time so time is often referred to as fourth dimension so remember normally we say 3d that is something we used to draw this box like a 3d right so this is a three-dimensional picture of a cube but what is this fourth dimension this is time dimension so remember space and time which are the basic component of geography are important but here in this concept of time geography the perspective is from the lenses of time we are looking into the space from the lens of the time so how does space look like and how can we measure the activities on space through this time so this is what we understand from time geography now let's elaborate the concept so first thing that we need to understand is that Torsten Hegel Strand. Now remember the name of this great eminent scientist and geographer, Torsten Hegel Strand, that is T. Hegel Strand. He was a Swedish geographer, so he belonged to Sweden, and he, in his work that was related to migration, cultural diffusion, that we also know as innovation of diffusion model, and time geography. So he contributed to these three important key factors or key important subjects in the discipline of geography. So time geography holds a really unique position. So remember time geography is an approach in the human geography that is largely part of the behavioral geography that is talking about how human beings behave in terms of the time and space. So that is what the basic premise was. So basically it is behavioral approximation. Now remember this phrase whenever we say time geography it is about the behavioral approximation not the absoluteness remember that is important in which decisions about behavior and time are the central points now here is another catch that decision that we take so remember when we take certain decisions it also is under the same framework that we can study that is the, with the framework of time geography so time geography or as it is also said time space geography so remember one axis is the time the other axis is the space so that is what it is called time space geography. So what happens? All the events phenomena happen in this space, but with this particular progression of time. So we analyze what happens to the space with reference to the time that is important with emphasis on the processes or events in respect to or with respect to time that is important. But remember, Hagerstrand was not the first person to talk about this. Before Hagerstrand also, there were numerous scientists, numerous geographers, geomorphologists and scholars who gave emphasis on the strength of time. Actually, to understand the processes, the events that are happening on the Earth's surface. So remember the theories of Kant, Fleur, Davis, Penck, Elsie King and several others who talked about 
time as a most significant aspect in their individual theories and concepts. So they have already learned in the previous sessions about all these scholars, who their contributions. So it is needless to say that how they actually emphasized upon time as well. But in this session, we are going to specify this particular time geography in terms of this concept by Torsten Hegerstrand. So let's understand more. So for a time geographic perspective, now remember this is one approach or one perspective that is important according to which each individual has the same amount of time. Now here is something that is important for the first thing that remember everyone is having one common base that everybody has the same 24 hours, has the same time if you talk about just one day. Each individual has 24 hours. That was the first important thing talking into this perspective that every individual has same amount of time. And remember, it is also important that everyone also has to use all available time each day. So it is not just what you have, but you have to use it every day. So it depends upon how you use it, what decisions you take. So the flow of time is assumed to have a constant pace. Now remember, this is the first important premise that the flow of time is having a constant pace. It has a fixed pace. So that is important. And individuals existence can be measured by clock time. Now remember, each individual's existence is fixed. It can be measured with reference of time. We say that a person was born in this year and he died in this year. So this is another way of looking at time. But remember, that is one of the key aspects that is important to understand this time geographic perspective. And this assumption is made for analytical purposes. So when we want to analyze an individual's decisions on this space, how he contributes to his decisions, how he affects the society, then in that way, his behavior, as we said, is important in context to the time. So most human individuals are aware of time, even though they experience it differently. Now, remember, if you ask somebody about time, everybody is aware of time, but in their different connotations, in their different ways, in their different practices, time is embedded for them. So in time geographically inspired research, what happens? Humans subjective ideas about time can be related to the clock time. Now, remember, clock time or standard time what we fix is something which reduces this important thing that we say is subjectivity. So what happens? Every subjective experience of time can be actually related to one clock time and that is important thereby bringing interesting thoughts and insights to the analysis of this time perspective or time geographic perspective. So now let's learn more. So the model of Hegerstrand as we say this time geographic model what does it say? Every living person or even every living organism deploys certain activities in a certain sequence. Now here is the word sequence. Remember where did we learn this sequence before this lecture? It was in Davis cycle of erosion, sequential change of landscape, right? So again, we see that in terms of the organism, that was in terms of the landscape or landforms. This is in terms of the organism's behavior. So every organism, or every human being for that matter, deploys certain activities in a certain sequence that is important. So a person, for example, goes in a general or on a specific time of the day to his or her work where they stay for X hours and then they further go to market or go to home or they go shopping or cook a meal or relax or go to bed at night. So remember from morning when you get up till the night when you actually go back to the bed, you have a sequence of events that is planned every day. But what happens? Is it exactly the way you plan it or there are certain anomalies to it? Certain days you plan something but it doesn't happen. So you do something else. So that is also that is important in this. So let's understand it further that in general we can see a clear pattern in the activities that humans deploy and this is called a life path. So according to the model of Hagerstrand, this is what he called a life path. So what is a life path? Basic idea is that from morning to evening what you do, that is your basic life pattern, that is your basic life path. So for example, what could be different kinds of paths? One is what we say life path, one can be weekly path, one can be daily path. So on that basis of your what you perform, your activities, you have different path. So different kinds of road that you travel every day in your life from your birth to death. It's a different path that you say life path. Then weekly, if in a week from Monday to Saturday or Sunday, what you do? 
that is a weekly path and daily from morning to night what you do that is a daily path but remember one thing that is common here is this time sequence and events accordingly so that is important so it shows the sequence of activities for a specific time period for example i go to work at 10 then i have my lunch at 2 then i go to market at 5 and then i return back home at 6 i have my dinner at 8 i go to bed at 10 in between i talk to people i meet many people then i watch tv i can have some leisure activity or i can take rest and then further i go to the bed at night that is general sequence of event remember but this is a sequence which is called a daily path and remember building these daily paths together will make your weekly path and gradually it will add to your larger path that is your life path so this is an entire sequential process through time lens when we are observing it so that is important here so let's understand what were the basic assumptions when Hegerstrand proposed this time geography concept so first assumption was that all physical entities have a limited life now remember the concept of mortality that everything has a limited life all physical entities which is physically tangible measurable observable so these are the important characteristics those physical parameters so they have a limited life it means their time is limited then physical entities cannot be more than one place at the same time now this is important again that any same physical entity cannot be at two different places at the same time if we talk about the physical parameters so that is important so that's why when we say that there is an exception that is through internet you can be sitting in India and New Delhi and you can be virtually in US or UK or wherever so that is one thing that is that is one exception that we say that through internet or through virtual space you can travel but for a physical world for a measurable tangible world you cannot go to different places at the same time so you will be located at one particular place that is important here assumption then physical entities are limited to the task they can do now there is also some kinds of limitation in the task that we can do that is also important assumption then all tasks demand time now here is the catch that in this fourth assumption when we say that all the physical entities which are located in a particular place which cannot be at different places at the same time has limitations of work also has a particular demand of time so all the tasks that individual performs will demand a particular time so that is important then movement also uses time now if that person moves from point a to b suppose i go from point a that is my home to office that is point b i will also require certain time so that is important i'll actually have that travel time so maybe half an hour or 30 minutes or if there is traffic then i'll take a little more time so traffic will be another important factor in my traveling between a to b that is from my home to my office so these are important things that we say that movement will require time so that movement factor will be also dependent upon the means of transport and the condition of the road or rail or through whatever means i'm traveling then no more than two objects can occupy the same place and the same time so this is again the same factor every object or space has a biography that is a story to say remember every individual or that space or that location will have a story and that story will be weaved through time so if you have watched mahabharat series it starts with the same word that what does it mean i am time and what i have observed is the story and that i'm going to narrate so this is another assumption in Hagerstrand's model that we say so these are the seven assumptions on which he proposed this time geography concept so let's understand what he said Hagerstrand came up with this idea of a space and time path to illustrate how a person finds and navigates his way in spatial environments so simplistically speaking he just said that Taking an individual from point A to back to that point A, that is from home when he goes to office to do some work outside and again coming back to home, his everyday path, his life, that is important. So how can we illustrate it? And now you can remember one more thing that Hagerstrand model of time geography comes into 1960s. It was during the quantitative revolution in geography. So what do you see in time geography? That the concept is actually trying to map the behavior 
or trying to quantify the human behavior in terms of the time measurements. So that is important here that it was kind of a quantification technique that was applied. So very often what happens that the paths of these people, remember those paths, weekly, daily or life paths are visually represented as prisms. Now here is another catch that he used this model of prism because remember what is a prism? It is a three-dimensional body, remember? So kind of a pyramidal shape if you have seen that prism. So it resembles like this. So a prism is something that was actually taken as a synonym of what is the illustration of spatial environment of that particular human being. The activity is under that prism. It is bounded to be inside that. So that is important here. Then changes in, for example, the mode of transport influences the prism because an actor can travel faster. Now here is the catch that if I say that my prism is fixed in this particular way, in this dimension. But this can change if these factors change. So if my mode of transport changes, suppose I'm traveling on foot and then I'm taking a car or I'm taking a public bus or I'm taking a metro or I'm taking a flight for that matter. So what will happen? In each case, my prism will be shaped differently if prism is the representation of my daily activity. So that is the basic idea behind this concept. So when the individual's path of persons come together, what happens? You get a path that is bundle. So when individual paths of persons come together, it means that my paths come together. My traveling from this point to that point, then again from that point to the other point, And then, you know, so much of mix, it creates a bundle of so many paths that I travel across, I perform activities every day. So in situation like this, it's possible that spread effects appear. So remember, there is a spreading that is important here. So spread effects are what? Remember, spread effect and backwash effect is also there in the economic theories and regional theories as well. But here we are talking about the activities of human being in that way, in terms of the paths, the bundle of paths. So spread effects are changes of your destination through these path bundles. Now remember, I was earlier planning to go from this A to B. But what happened? I met a friend at this particular junction and I went to C. So what happened? I changed my regular path to now this path and gradually when I see that due to so many reasons, every day I change path and then this kind of path becomes a bundle of so many paths and my life path. And that is important here. So this is where I keep spreading across the time space. So if you look into this prism map, what do you see? This is a particular prism that is there in which you see space of opportunities within the reach of this individual. And what is outside it? It is out of reach. But remember, the past is here, right? And this is the present and this is the future which is outside the reach, right? But what you see in the second image, there is a shift, there is a change because of changes in opportunities, right? So the original prism was this, but now it has shifted here. So there is a change in this and that is where we say that there is lots of spread effect of these regular paths of bundle of paths. So that is what is important here to understand the concept of basic prism. So it's not fixed and it is dynamic obviously because it's behavioral concept. So what happens? There are lots of constraints as well. So Hagerstrand noted that individuals were not completely free to create their paths. So here is something that is important to understand that every individual is not free enough to just create his own path without any constraint, without any disturbance or without any external control. So he therefore described three different types of constraints that are important. That is what you say as hurdles in the individual's experience of life, in the path of life that you say. So what are those? First is called capability constraint. That is the capability of a person. In daily life, what happens? Humans are committed to different things like eating, sleeping, to function well, right? So this is one constraint that you have to eat, you have to sleep, you have to perform certain duties which are important to actually sustain your daily life. That is where your capability will be there according to what you actually perform in that. So that will help you out or actually deform you. Then there is something which is coupling constraint. And now what is this coupling constraint? The word itself is couple. It means more than one. So what happens? There are more than one factors, more than one factors that are important. Those could be hurdle in your daily prism, your daily space. What are those? You can actually 
have a change of transport so some days you hire car some days you go by taxi some days you take metro but remember all these things are not just you here the second factor is the vehicle the machine itself here in taxi the second factor is machine as well as the driver of the car so in metro also you are not just singular you are dependent upon more than one person and that is where the constraint is so it means these constraints have what have influences on these parts of individuals that's why it is constraint then what we have certain authority constraint the word itself is authority it means there is a power relation there is authoritativeness in certain factors for example so rules laws and other things right if you have an office at 10 and if you go late then your boss will fire you or you will be scolded so you have an authority over you to reach at 10 so that is also one constraint you cannot just choose your own path and you can you know become your own life this is my life this is my choice certain choices are bounded by these authorities as well so this is also important in terms of these rules laws and you know opening closing hours so these are certain constraints that were identified in terms of capability coupling and authority by hagerstrand so what happened hagerstrand after identifying this so he did a very interesting thing that he was inspired by musical notations and accordingly he actually illustrated this concept of these constraints in various definitions so first one is the space time aquarium that he defined which is also called space time cube so that is what we say as a cube which is actually fixing your movement in a particular way which displays individuals path in a particular graphical projection of space time coordinate that is important second was space time prism so prism we have already discussed that individuals possible behavior in time space given their capability and other constraint is a particular prism that you see in this particular image as well then bundle of paths that we have already discussed that there is a conjunction of individual paths and these paths actually create this pockets of local order for example if you live in a locality every day you go and buy milk to a particular shop then you go to the other shop you buy your vegetables then you come back home so every day when you do the same thing then what happens these regular paths become your life order that is what is your local order and that is gradually creating different kinds of bundles of path so that is important then concentric tubes or rings of accessibility was another factor that was illustrated which indicates certain capability constraints of a given individual such as spatial size limited manual or oral auditive or visual range so these are about individuals capabilities that actually impact that space so that is important then nested hierarchies or domains now here is another important thing there could be hierarchies that is low to high that is a sequence in terms of the higher authority to lower authority so that is also important in terms of authority constraints that we see so what do you observe here in this image now you can pause the video and also draw this image for yourself you say, say this time space path now you look at this particular path here is the time of the day and here is the distance from home so what do you see an individual travels to this point right then what happens this cube or what you say is this prism actually is the daily life space part so you actually go to this a b t c all these a b c d points is part of your regular visits that is part of your regular domain of space in which you perform activities and every activity will have a given amount of time that you require for that so this is what has been represented here which hagerstrand actually illustrated in terms of this graphical notations that we said but remember this time space geography was not foolproof it also had lots of criticism so let's understand what was that criticism all about the criticism of time geography exists in two main streams basically the first one points out that the importance of physical factors in time geography is there as we said physical factors were important remember the assumptions that we have studied and thereby absence of human thought and action so it said that physical factors are actually prominent in this time space geography so human thought and action was actually undermined human thought and action is equally important in terms of the performances on the space in terms of the events in terms of activities and also what it undermined was the social understanding of time and space it just took 
that clock understanding, physical understanding of time and space. So that was important. Then other main criticism of time geography is that it was based on assumption that time and space are objective and transparent. So now this is another assumption that was under question. It was criticized that remember time and space is a dynamic thought. Many people think of time and perceive of time and space differently. So there is a subjectivity involved it cannot be considered objective and remember there was absence of race gender sexuality and so many other things in this entire theory of time geography so remember it was a little away from the reality because of too much of dependence on the physical model building and too much of quantitative thought process that was there in that particular time period so that was important criticism that was there and Remember, it was also about that how actually humans behavior could be talked in terms of a prism. Is it feasible to actually fix humans activity in a prism of that particular time space geography? No, because there are lots of other dimensions to it. So that was what was criticized. So time geography links space and time into a coherent framework and is suitable for detailed comparison of accessible levels of different population groups. So this can be an individual kind of study which is important but for a group for a larger picture it is not that relevant that is important apart from that it is also important to understand that apart from these criticisms it's not that time geography is invalid it has its validity it has its importance and it is one of the most important tools in human geography when we talk about human behavior in terms of manifestation of human activities on that time space framework so what we see is the new applications of time geography and what you see these are the spheres where time geography holds key in modern concept we see so what is that it appears that time geography is getting attention from wide range of fields currently public health social network transportation and logistics social justice national security location based services remember all those gps based apps that you have and marketing all these factors are not devoid of time geography or time space connotation so what you observe now this is the modern framework or the manipulated network framework if you observe in terms of time and space so here you have time for e-shopping as well here you have time for social networking as well in everyday life path now you have these things which are part of this social network that are actually now creating changes and also having significant impact on the real spaces mappable spaces not just the virtual spaces so that has become important that's why time geography is actually relevant because it will always be relevant till there is this concept of time as you perceive it existing in geography as well as in general everyday life so now, when we have understood about the time geography, its various connotations, its concept, in the lectures to come, we are going to learn more on spatial organization and further more concepts in geography. So stay tuned, stay safe and all the best wishes.